Hello, I'm Malcolm Hauser. I'm Janice Baker. One of the most popular instruments in the 1920s was the ukulele. But how much do you know about the instrument? My dog has fleas. Oh, I feel very sorry for your dog. <laughs> and coming up soon is the International Dance Day. They have a day for dance. They certainly do. Those subjects and more next on... Our time. Really? Your time? Mm. 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 Hello. Hello. <laughs> We're back. An amazing amount of times we say the same thing. I know, thing. I know. <laughs> well, you know, we'd be surprised how many places frown upon and or outright ban the act of dancing. Even in the US, strict Southern Baptists don't dance. And this led to the famous hard work of Chicago team Rhett McCormick. Who proved them wrong and overcame the community through the medium of dance in the hard-hitting 1984 documentary Footloose. So we have a very special guest. Talk about something I actually knew nothing about and considering I actually run a dance school. I yes, think. yes. Because surprise, there surprise. is an International Dance Day, and Fiona Gardner is our special guest. Tell us all about it. Hello, Fiona. Thanks, Malcolm. Oh, you get your, have to get your dance school engaged in International Dance well, Day. Well, that's absolutely well. right. In fact, I'll have to wear this little sticker on my coat, if I can get it off, Fiona. Do you want to have it? Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> this might be your microphone. Do that clever thing. Is you, thing you go. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure how well it sticks but, to clothing, but there you go. Oh, it's stuck. Um, yeah, <laughs> looks I'm, beautiful. I'm now authentic. It's a beautiful logo. Um, the design really goes well. Now, but I, look, there's a, an international day for almost everything these days, but I actually didn't know there was an international dance day. So International Dance Day was um, created by UNESCO's Dance Council for the Preservation of Dance, and it's right. celebrated annually on the 29th of April and so not so, last so it's coming up it's coming up um so not last year 2018 but in 17 16 and 15 I produced flash mobs around the Adelaide CBD wow yeah so this year we're doing a major flash mob and for those who don't understand what a flash mob is and I'm sure there isn't that many people that don't understand what a flash mob is but it's where people go out into the streets and do spontaneous dancing so no, but it's all in a crowd it's we yes. So I'm prearranging. But that. the public who are walking down the street or wherever they are have no idea, and then suddenly the whole street bursts into dance. Yes, exactly. That's people the come aim. from everywhere. Yes, exactly. Or people just walking down the street suddenly start to dance. Yes. And if you're walking next to them, you think, was I supposed to be doing that? <laughs> I've seen them when they do the orchestra. You know, it's not here. Um, you know, I've I've seen it somewhere on television or something where somebody starts playing an instrument and then. There's lots of people join it, and it's just fantastic. So I can't wait to see something like that. Be so really... how do you prepare for that? Yeah, how? It's a lot of um, calling people, administration, people registering, and there's going to be a few different things. I'm going to have some events. So people, there'll be a ballet bar on the bridge, going to set up like a roller skating disco, and then there'll be um, a dancing room, and then other people can engage. So the Adelaide City Council is sponsoring the project mm -hmm. and through their town hall initiative. So there'll be events um, from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock, so a smoking ceremony. and um, At the Town hall. Yeah, at the town hall. Right. So the meeting room out the back. Right. And so people can engage in different ways in the day. And then I have, um, there'll be an installation work. So um, if you want to participate, you can come. And we're just, um, have been planning it now. So uh, there'll be people standing still. And then all of a sudden they'll start moving and some dancers dancing around them and things like that. How will people find out about it then? Um, so you can public? go to my website, which is finzart.com.au. So it's like fine art, but with an S. Uh -huh. um, or you can go to Facebook, Finns Art Inc, um, and all the information's on there, or um, Google search International Dance Day Adelaide. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But the point is, this is happening everywhere, isn't it? All around the world. Yeah. So People international are participating in this. Yeah, exactly. So but UNESCO. Yeah, exactly. So UNESCO has their specific event where they're engaging schools. So I think you can post um, online. And so my project's supported by Premier and Cabinet. So they're um, supporting um, me to collaborate with five different artists to create the major major flash mob which people can learn during the month of April in local sponsoring councils which is at Marion and Adelaide. 
How did you become involved? How was um, so I used to run a studio called Finn's Art Studio yeah. um, on Grenfell Street and it was like a hub for dancers. So it had residencies and performances and classes and workshops and all that kind of thing. And I was kind of like, oh, you know, what's there to do in Adelaide? Oh, let's do this thing. So then I applied for um, funding from town, like the Adelaide City Council, because yep. that's where my studio was and they supported it. And it kind of, it's just kind of kept growing I suppose so this is the first year I suppose four years since I started doing yeah. it and now it's turned into something much bigger than I expected <laughs> but, but that's brilliant well because when you think about it um, most parents take usually their daughter sadly not their son but usually their daughter at some point to a dance class yes. in fact took my son it, well you did in <laughs> fact I did, you in did. Fact, you uh, but I'm going to qualify yes, that in a minute okay but um at the moment, there's a huge push for taking kids from about 18 months old and learning like a baby's dance or it's called lots of different things. We call it happy feet. And there's lots of different classes around. So children are exposed to dance at a very early age now. Yeah. And then many people then or many kids then go on to go to one of the private schools around, uh, private dance schools around and learn to dance. And then they sort of drift out of it around their mid-teenage life except those that want to go on to be dancers. Um, so everybody's, almost everybody sort of gets a taste of this when they're young, but it sort of fades away a bit. Do you think a day like this will encourage people to be physical again and enjoy the music and let their body flow accordingly? Yeah, I think... That was a very long what? question. No, it was a good question, though, because I think I the know. day is about showcasing the device, diversity of dance mm. in Adelaide because there are a lot of different styles, there are a lot of different schools. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we don't really necessarily connect with all of them because we get caught in our own little world. And I think yeah. that, um, you know, there's a time for doing which everyone should do dance. And there's a time for watching and appreciating. So I think there's a, many different avenues that people can engage with dance. Oh, oh. And I know that there's also the Parkinson's with dance. And, you know, there's a couple oh. of dancers in the room today. <laughs> yes. so it's amazing. It's, it's, yeah, it yeah. is amazing. And I think I just wanted to showcase that there is such a diversity in dance and inspire people to kind of collectively talk about what does dance mean into Australia's culture? Because Yeah, but it's every not, nightclub. Yeah, people exactly. are dancing. People they are don't dancing. have to learn to dance. They can just do that a lot. <laughs> they can just move around. Yeah, yes, exactly. exactly. So I think Did it, you like that? <laughs> Choreography by M. Hasler. <laughs> uh, you're going to come and particip participate, participate in the day, aren't you? <laughs> the major flash mob. You can I'll also do... i change across you, the floor. You can also do your own pop-up flash mob. So if you register online... So you have to become a FinsArt member for like $2. Register online and then you can... We'll come and film you um, doing your own little dance in the street. So so we're not we're talking to people everywhere. This is the point, and this is not just here in South Australia, but everywhere. Victoria, Perth, wherever you're watching this program, um, get out, find out a bit more. As we just said, the website, your website here in South Australia is finsart.com.au. But if you just Google. Um, you, As I did, in fact, to find out more about it. UNESCO Dance Council. It's everywhere. It's everywhere, yeah. So this is just the idea that I thought was a really good grassroots initiative yeah. to get people engaged, um, you know, and it doesn't cost a lot of money. It's like a filmmaker and someone turning around and filming the dancers on the street. And then we edit the video together and then we share it online um, through social media. But people, like uh, kids could do that through TikTok. People could do that through Facebook, yeah. through all of these platforms. Yeah, exactly. We just fill yeah. the world with happy people dancing. Yeah, exactly. Fill the whole of your social media with dance. Even if we just oh. Google dance mob dance day or something like that, you well, could find it. Well, International Dance Day In actually brings dance up day. the whole bit of information. Yeah, exactly. But let, let's just take a look at what this could look like because we've got a bit of footage that you gave us and it's perfect. It explains it all. <laughs> you look lovely. Ballet bar on the bridge. I expect yeah, yeah. to see you there. I can 5 30 p.m. Don't be late. Yeah. Tights, tutu, <laughs> and everything. <laughs> You'll have to join the class. Oh, yeah. Not just TikTok it at home. <laughs> Get some professional training into you. Oh, no, <laughs> Learn how to point your feet to a devil pay. He does, oh, he does know how to do um, that. But for you, 
At the end of the day, what do you feel for you you're getting out of this? Uh, I think over the years um, it's been interesting watching people because Adelaide's not necessarily flash mob material, you know, it's very spread out. Yep. And so I just say to people, dance for the camera and you just see instantly there's like this nervousness <laughs> and then they just are so happy afterwards. So it just makes me happy to see that other people are engaging in dance yeah. and inspiring people to be <laughs> engaged with dance in whatever way that means that they want to engage with. And there's a permanent record. If yeah, you're it looks, put it up. yeah, yeah, and it's a permanent record, and it just showcases the collective of the voice of dance. I think that we kind of miss what um, you know that in our so society, it's almost a bit fragmented and you know disconnected. As whereas, what I'd love to see is that well, unity in spreading yeah, dance. Yeah, truth is, First Nation people, for example, their whole culture is built around dance, and yes. there are many cultures around the world that have that same sort of storytelling through dance um, collective, I suppose, yeah. in their in the way that they pass on their information. Yeah, it's such a, um, a unity kind of event, you know, actually sharing a dance. You know, when you, you can dance with someone and never speak to them and then afterwards you just feel like you have this bond with them, mm. you know, more than if you actually have had a conversation with them. There's a sense of familiarity. It breaks down barriers. It yeah. creates a sense of humanity. Yeah, you part know, of the human condition. Yeah, empathy mm. and, all, you know, self-awareness and caring is kind of something that we're missing in our society. With it's, all, it's all the aggressive that, drivers. Yeah, yeah, it's truly weird that. Get out of your car and dance. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> Turn your music on. The on. Top. <laughs> oh, I like that. You'd be on the be on the front of the car. Yeah. Doing Fiona, it's been lovely to meet you. Good luck with what's leading up. Thank you. And to the day itself. Thank yes. you. And, uh, I'll see you both there. Get, oh, yeah. Get, yeah, well, we'll get some footage and come back and we can have a look at some of the things that have that happened. You've done. It'll be nice. Yeah. We'll do a follow up story with you. Oh, that sounds great. Thank so, you. any age, any age. Any age, anyone can participate. We're going to have a, um, a senior couple do some ballet, I think. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you remember Libby in the wheelchair? The, the, yes, uh, yes, yes. From the Olympics? Yes. And she danced for us in a wheelchair. So, she, see, it doesn't really matter. No, yeah, it doesn't it. matter. It's not a, about judging how your dance style. It's no, not. Get out there and dance day, get out and enjoy be yourself. There you exactly. Go. And Thanks we'll be back to find out why my dog has fleas in a tick. <laughs>
band, if you like. Mm. There's also a couple of groups of ukulele players that sort of play like a choir. Is that the right? That's right. Band yeah. Or? Well, we've, we've had a few uh, fairly famous uh, people. We've got the Ukulele Death Squad. Yes. They tour the uh, tour the world and uh, won an award here, and then got a grant to go off to uh, the Ember Fringe. Yep. Um, and then we have the Wheat Sheaf Ukulele Collective, another fantastic group. There's lots of little ute groups around the place. There's the Ukulele Dream Girl. She's doing doing some shows. <laughs> yeah, the Fringe. The Fringe is absolutely full of things with yeah. but ukulele. ukulele. Suddenly, yeah. it's just because are they an easy instrument to play? Well, they are. Okay, uh, when you're playing a guitar, if you wanted to make a a C chord, you would need to turn six strings into three notes, um, which is quite difficult. You need at least three fingers to do it. With this, if you take your third finger and put it at the third fret on the string closest to your feet. Okay. Third finger. There you go. Just on the one, two, three. One, two, three, and strum. That is a C chord. And then all you have to do is just have to strum in time. C, that's right. So if you strum in time, you can go row, 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 you row gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Oh, we've there got go. it all on this program. Well, 30 I seconds you've what, learned music. to play. Well done. Congratulations. Your first I have to go out and buy one tomorrow. Good, good. <laughs> Everyone should have a ukulele. What <laughs> well, fun. You know, I never realised that was one call. <laughs> That's so. it. The same, the same with uh, Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree. Yeah. Frere Jacques is an F chord. Frere Jacques, Frere. It's also the same with the beat goes on. Oh, an F is there, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Man. That is exactly right. Oh, my fingernails are too long. That's right. First lesson, <laughs> cut your fingernails with your left hand, but grow them on your right <laughs> so you can strum. No, it's out of tune. Excellent. Definitely out of tune. I guess. <laughs> I love this, though. Look at this ukulele. It's very cute. Isn't that fantastic? Even the back of it. Piece of fruit. It so, a piece oh, of fruit a day. Don't speak about me like <laughs> that. Piece of fruit a day, keep the doctor away. Is yeah. it? Yeah, but, it, but they've modernised them because the one I've got just got wooden pegs that don't the always old, hold the tune. That's right. I've got some old ones from, from Hawaii that are like that. Violin tune is very frustrating things. These are geared, make it really simple. You can get uh, tuners which fit on your headstock. So oh. people think you've got a great ear, but really what you do is you've got an electronic tuner. It makes it 30 seconds to tune, even less. Oh, brilliant. Which is great when you've got a group of 100 people. It's much nicer when they're all in tune. Oh. So, uh, yes, and mm. strumming together. Yes, that's right. But I'm, I'm amazed because it's a really pretty little instrument. It's great, yeah. yeah I like the American like look there. Too. Yeah, that's the Texas flag, yeah. Both of those are from a, a company called Carla, which started in 2005. Really, that's part of the reason why I think ukulele is so incredibly popular. They were the, uh, they started to produce, mass produce, good quality ukuleles for less than $100. Right. Whereas oh. before, you have to spend 1000 to get a Hawaiian instrument that actually played in tune. Now you can spend less than 100 and you get a rigid instrument, real tuners, real strings, yeah. Italian strings, plays in tune. What more could you want? I've heard really good uh, players using also, you know, the sound box of the uh, to get rhythm and stuff That's as right. they're playing. Yeah, all that stuff, which turns it almost into a yep. mini band. That's right. Which is fantastic. Can I, I just ask, though, because... Uh, if, no, we haven't got time, no, sorry. The, the size compared, the size. yours compared to He's this. got a big one. No. <laughs> I've got a big one. Why? Always, people always ask about size. Size is important. Okay, this is a tenor size instrument. Oh, okay. They are soprano instruments. They are tuned exactly the same. There is one in between called a concert. Uh, don't think of it in terms of singing where we had tenors and, and mm. sopranos. They're all tuned exactly the same way. It's just that they're bigger. So you get a bigger box, so yeah. it's louder. Yeah. And more space for your fingers to fit in. Okay. So when you're trying to play one of those, it's really hard to squeeze yes, your fingers you in. Fingers. This, you can really sort of spread your fingers out okay. and just sort of makes it quite easy to get those fingers in. Is it more expensive than the smaller one? Uh, yeah, generally a little bit more expensive. Uh, so more wood, Janice. More yeah, wood. well, that's yeah, right. It's it's a little bit more wood. Yeah. yeah. A little bit more expensive, but not a lot. Now, so I read up on you a bit. Oh, okay. And you'd pass some comments about good and bad ukes, and you just commented on that before. Um, some of them are more or less like toys, really. That's right. Um, they are. So just say I'm a parent and my kid 
seems to want to play something and I just get them a little cheap one because I'm afraid they might mm. break it or they might lose interest straight away. Mm. Um, is there a sort of a standard that's good to start with? Is there a starting uh, point? Yeah, I, I generally sort of think probably you want to spend about fifty to sixty dollars. Sort right. of look at it that sort of way. If you're buying a, a something that costs, you know, the, the price of a slab of beer, you know, sort of thirty dollars, and it comes from Toys R Us or, or uh -huh. one of those sort of toy it's stores. Plastic, probably. It's yeah, it's plastic. It's, it's probably yep. not going to be that good. But if he's only two years old, <laughs> that's fine. And I want to buy it for him that's to annoy fine. his parents. <laughs> <laughs> Which is As good. all grandmothers As should. <laughs> you should and and a recorder and a yeah. drum oh, kit. Oh, he's a drum kit. I got that for Christmas. Excellent. Well done. Yes, yes but it's at my house. <laughs> <laughs> That was your best first mistake. So, yeah, no, but the value of, of a child yeah. learning an instrument when their fingers are small, surely this must be great for them long term as well because they've already got that fingering in their mm. head. Fantastic. I mean, a lot of schools used to teach, I think we all went through recorder. Yes. You know, when we were in school, yes. we all had recorders. Now they're all moving to, to ukulele, which is fantastic. I've got some friends that are writing books for the, for the curriculum wow. for, for ukulele. Oh, fantastic. Because um, the kids can sing. It looks like a little guitar, so they kind of feel a bit more rock star, yes. which is great. They yes. love that sort of thing. But the fact that they can make it a simple little thing and sing along with it, yes. uh, it's just fantastic that they can get into it. They're inexpensive. Um, and right. schools are, I'm selling a lot of ukuleles to schools right. who are, are moving away from recorder, thankfully. My son actually started with the saxophone. Did he? Yeah. Oh, okay. He had the choice, I think, of a couple of things, but he chose a sax and he got, he was very good too. Mm. It, it just opens your mind up to oh, so many things. I think it's lovely things. what but they I offer do, these days too. I do remember seeing in the older, old, older times, because I'm really that old, <laughs> um, Ukes that really were guitar size, just four string guitar size, mm. that a lot of comedians used to work with. They'd sing their little ditty at the That's end right. of their act or whatever. Um, are they still around? Because yeah, I haven't they're, seen any. They're the baritone. Ukes. Oh, okay. And they were invented uh, by uh, for the Favilla Company, um, I think Chicago or New York. Just basically. because they're easier to play? Yeah, Herc uh, Favilla wanted an instrument that he could get kids to play, um, but realised that the guitars that were on offer were too big and too complex. So he, he decided right. to basically just remove a couple of strings. It's tuned like a guitar. It was four strings. Four strings. Say, yeah. yeah, two strings are missing, so it's tuned just like a guitar. Um, and it's a baritone. Um, so all of the things that they could learn on that were fully transferable to a large-scale guitar. guitar. Arthur Godfrey had a TV program yes. where he would teach you how to play. Right. He was a baritone player, wonderful player. Right. Um, yeah, very easy to get into. If you've been playing any guitar, pick up a baritone, 30 easy. seconds. Wow. Yeah. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, some people take to these things really quickly. Others take forever. So... Take up swimming instead. We'll be back in a tick to talk a bit more with Christopher Carr. Christopher Carr is with us with his ukulele. And you've got this little gadget on the top to help you tune, which is amazing because as you um, strum the note, you can see that the, mm, the note, actually the note just keep strumming A for a minute. Yeah. There you go. And you can see on the little screen there, mm. the letter A. So it's fantastic. It's, it's electronic. It helps you tune when you want to get a whole bunch of people in tune quickly. Yeah. Um, and you can learn to tune by ear later. It's, it, this instrument is very much about getting your hands on. It's like a playground. Yeah. It's sort of, you know, you've got all the equipment there. Just, just jump in, put your fingers on it play and see what it, comes it's out. Got, it has got, to me, sort of a Pacific Ocean sound. I don't know. Every time I <laughs> yes. hear them, I think of waves lapping Hawaii. on the beach and Hawaii. No, Hawaii. No, you're oh, welcome. Wow. Um, you know, all of that old rubbish. But you, you can, I don't know, whether it's something embedded in the brain mm. or I don't know. But it's just got this lovely oh, melodic, soft... Mm. Well, it, pre it predates Hawaii, but the Hawaiians really... They rechristened it ukulele. It was a machete from Portugal. And the Portuguese oh, okay. took it to Hawaii. They started making them, called it an ukulele. King and Queen started playing it, and the Queen uh, wrote songs, the King wrote songs, and whatever the King of Queen of Hawaii were doing, 
That's what their subjects wanted to do. So oh, it became the national great. instrument. It's actually a Portuguese instrument from probably 400, probably 400 years. Maybe Can you spell it? No. <laughs> it's oh, ukulele. 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 Yep. Ukulele. Ukulele. Yeah. yeah. Which some people say is jumping flea. We never know. <laughs> the things you learn on this program are just amazing. Us too. Listen, we've had a great time. Yes, we have. Don't forget you. International Dance Day coming up soon. Mm -hmm. Got to do my little sticker still there. And if you're looking for a ukulele, go and ask somebody who really knows what they're talking about or join your local uke. There club. is just ukulele Google, clubs. Google, Google, Google. Yep. Just, just Google ukulele club or go to Ukulele SA on Facebook. If you're a Facebook type person, there's a list of all the clubs there. Contact people. Well, we'll we will some make information you... on our Facebook site. We will. Yep. Time to go. It is. Say goodbye, Thank Janice. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye, Janice. <laughs> See you next time. Keep yourself nice till then. Bye.